The iPhone 7 was advertised to us as an advanced camera with the highest battery life of any iPhone and the most colorful iPhone display ever. Apple said it looked every bit as powerful as it was. But I do believe Macworld UK said it best when they posted this review. iPhone 7, an attractive smartphone unless you own an iPhone 6s. Yeah, right out of the gate, Apple was hit with the complaint that it wasn't much different than the iPhone 6s at all. One site said, if you've used an iPhone 6 or 6s, you'll feel like you've returned home after a long holiday and the window curtains have been changed. How fun, new, and innovative is that? And guys, this iPhone has a brand new processor, the first quad core for a phone. Well, I mean, right behind the Samsung Galaxy S4, LG Nexus 4, the LG Optimus G, the Samsung Galaxy Note 2, and HTC One. But yeah, great job, Apple. They did change up their antenna bands a bit, though. For those of you who don't know, the antenna bands are those white lines that run across the back of your iPhone 6S. Now, they don't curve across the back. Instead, they curve around the ends. Now, although at first you might think, oh, that's great, it's so aesthetically pleasing. Upon further analysis, you realize that this renders all iPhone 6S cases useless on an iPhone 7. <laughs> Ooh, uh, and the screen is 25% brighter than on the 6S, which means that the asshole in front of you at the movie theater is going to be 25% more of an asshole. And when you check to see what time it is in the middle of the night, you'll be 25% more blind. My eyes! There's another big difference between the last generation of iPhone and this one that you've probably heard about because there was no way that the word dongle was going to steer clear of the meme community. See, the 7 has no headphone jack, so in order to use your headphones, you have to plug them into a dongle and then plug the dongle into the lightning jack, creating a freakish auxiliary version of the human centipede. Apple did attempt to create a solution in the form of the phonetically confusing AirPods. Unfortunately, they're just Bluetooth earbuds that look a bit like E.T. if he was involved in a horrible biking accident that resulted in the amputation of his arms. Although they are strange looking and scream, I'm an entitled fuck! We could all stand for fewer dangling cords in our life, right? Well, uh, only if you have $159 laying around because they are not included in your iPhone purchase. And the battery only lasts five hours because fuck you. Apple has stated that, while inconvenient, the loss of the headphone jack is made up for by the extra speaker that creates what they describe as stereo speakers. Only, they don't have any sort of stereo separation. And they're still very noticeably just iPhone speakers. Plus, who the hell listens to music through their speakers? That sucks. What am I gonna do now? How am I supposed to listen to my audiobook edition of To Kill a Mockingbird while jogging through downtown Atlanta? <sighs> Fuckers. Now, I know what a lot of you are thinking. Bobby, hold up. What about the new color? And you're right, you're right. They added a brand new color to their gothic rainbow line of phones. Jet black. It's true, it's true, unbelievable, I know. There is a downside though. The new finish is prone to micro abrasions, which, in case you're wondering, are the Trump hands of scratches. But Bobby, what's the difference between micro abrasions and scratches? Well, Apple's marketing team. Also, the new beautiful and glossy finish is a fingerprint magnet, which is great if you're a criminal dusting for prints to hack into someone's touch ID. Apple thinks of everyone, except for the poor, which is why the 32 gigabyte version of the phone isn't available in jet black. That kind of innovation costs money. And I guess uses gigabytes? Another change is the home button, or should I say home button? Because it's not. It uses a haptic engine that makes you think that it's a button by vibrating or buzzing. So Apple pioneered the fake button. There's a consensus that the camera on the 7 is by far the best Apple has put out, but the Google Pixel is arguably better, and it comes in at $25 cheaper. For those of you keeping track at home, that is about one-sixth of an AirPod. There's also the Samsung Galaxy S7, which takes much higher quality low-light photos. And you know, there's also just a DSLR camera. Why do I say that? Well, although the iPhone 7's camera might be comparable to some basic DSLRs, the phone's battery has to handle a lot like Clash of Clans, Snapchat, and the 17 private browsing windows you have saved for when you're just on the toilet, mom, jeez. With a DSLR, you only have to worry about camera-related battery problems. And while Apple promises an extra hour of battery life compared to the 6S, users seem to have a 
differing opinions. Like, how good can the battery be if it doesn't even last a day? The short battery life even forced this person to give up on Pokemon Go entirely, fearing he'd have to bury his phone next to his social life. So here's an answer you've probably been waiting for. Yes, the iPhone 7 is water resistant-ish. How do they do it? Well, uh, many ways, but one of them is to put rubber around the SIM card tray. Wait, you didn't know your iPhone had a SIM card? Well, that's because you can't open it on any of the models. You need a special tool that only the Genius Bar and your weird cousin Al have access to. So, although you might not have known that there was a SIM card in your phone, Water has. And Water has taken advantage of that knowledge, ruining our iPhones for generations by infiltrating a compartment we didn't even know we had. But hey, if something happens to your iPhone, it suffers water damage, and it isn't your fault, don't you worry. That's all on you. Apple's warranty doesn't cover it. 